you are in school. Where, where is yours? Okay. You will want to write. You will see that you will want to write. And it will now pay you that, ah, no one forget this one. They, we passed the talk. Oh, you know. uh, then let's get our hearts ready. Uh, the way it is going to go, I will speak for, by the time I start, I'll take the first part. Then uh, my wife will come up to take the uh, second part. Then I will come to conclude. Now I will be speaking to the men and she, her own assignment this month is to be speaking to the women. Uh, school, they on law, they on shift for 20 years. No, they on show more than the Praise the Lord. At least about my the lawyer gone, uh, uh, what I can like say, uh, seven years, the doctor, six years, the lawyer, have it? Uh -huh. So, about 20 years, Edemo. In, mar in the school of marriage, you don't graduate. That's why you receive your, uh, your certificate at the entrance. The Wale, but certificates here. That's the only school where you are giving your certificate at the beginning. You know? And some people see ideas along the line. Some take theirs to court along the line and things like that. But I pray for us in Jesus' name that we all will enjoy marriage in Jesus' name. Let me what the Bible says as we start. I'll take the introduction. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Look at what the Bible says about marriage. You know, if we go back to Genesis, some people will say, Marriage is an Old Testament thing. But let's start from the New Testament. The Testament of the blood of Jesus. It says marriage. Look at this. Marriage is honorable in all. Now, you know what they call honorable in all? The Bible did not say marriage is honorable. Maybe 50%, 10%, 50% or 25%. No. Bible says marriage is honorable in all. Which means that marriage is a honorable thing in all areas. Hallelujah. Now, this is what the word of God says. Now, let me just finish the reading. And the bed on the fault, but homongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now, we don't need those parts today. I only want to show you this. Marriage is honorable in all. Tell your neighbor, marriage is honorable. Now, how do we treat honorable people in the, in the, in the political setting? We respect them. Now, we say this man is an honorable, which means he has applied, he has uh, contested uh, for, for a house of uh, assembly. You know, he's a honorable member of the house of assembly. That's what people say. Honorable member of the senate. So, a honorable person is anyone that you see that they have bestowed honor upon. And for scriptures to say marriage is honorable, it means that marriage is a thing worthy of honor, worthy of praise. What your thanksgiving? Though we have a lot of people in the world of today that, you know, several people say several things. If you hear the opinions of people, some people's opinion about marriage is against marriage. While some speak about marriage, uh, some people's opinion is in favor of marriage. I've had people that say marriage is God deciding to punish man. In fact, one of the members of our level church, we went for visitation i told him to follow me let's visit one of the members there that the notice have not been coming to church so when we go to our shop we started talking you know and the baba said ah pastor marriage is uh is punishment that god decided to give to man uh -uh. i said are you a member of the level church he said papa pastor i'm telling you sir i'm telling you sir i've studied so many things he said you know what they call woman it means woe to man ah i said baba we need to sit down we need to talk. Where did you get this orientation from? So people with several opinions. And sincerely speaking, some people entered marriage and they are hot. It does not make marriage wrong. Now, it's just like now. Uh, somebody will say, ah, uh, it's, it's too lean. It's too lean. And they said, what did you eat last? He said, uh, I ate, I ate, I ate uh, 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 moi moi like one of our sisters. I ate moi moi. She said, I went to an occasion. I ate moi moi. And when I saw that they, they served a four, I ate a four. When I saw that there was plantain, I ate plantain. And I also ate their jellof rice. But while I was going, Pastor, I took their amala too. Can you see that? It is not the food. It is the combination. Hello? Marriage, the Bible says, is a honorable thing. It is not marriage at most times that is at fault. In fact, it's not marriage. 
Marriage is not a curse. Because God himself said in Genesis, let us make for man a help meet that will help man to fulfill what? Destiny. Fulfill purpose. Let's make for man a help to meet. To meet up to what? To meet up to purpose. So marriage is not a sin. Marriage is not woe unto man. As Ababa said, hallelujah. Marriage is a blessing of God. Marriage is a blessing of God. I'm still taking the introduction for you to understand. So if marriage is not working for you, understand that God can never be wrong. We serve a God that can never be wrong. That's why he is God. He made wisdom himself. He himself is wisdom. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. He, he knows. Hallelujah. So for him to have instituted marriage, and up till now you see that people are still giving birth to children in male and female. Children in male and female. Why? God wants the life to continue to increase. So for God to have instituted marriage, marriage is not a curse. But we are going to be treating throughout this month where people miss it. So, let me have a question that uh, uh, all, can I see? I have a focus for this service. My wife will also follow it. What is marriage about? That several men and women do not prepare for today. What is marriage about? That several men or women do not prepare for today. Let's look at it. Marriage, what is it about? There are so many people just go into it, they are not prepared. If you ask some people, why, why are you getting married today? He said, they will just say, you are a pastor, you don't understand. When a child has gotten to the point of having a hole, he will have a hole. When a child has gotten to the point of owning a cutlass, he will have his cutlass. That's why some people get married. Some people don't understand what marriage is all about. You will see some people, they go into marriage, you say, that lady is sexy, I just feel like having her in my, in my room, in my house, and things like that. Let me quickly get married to her. Marriage is not about being sexy. Now, you ask some men, you say, ah, in fact, some ladies, you say, that young man has six packs. In fact, I, do, I don't know, I just need to bring, his, bring him into my house. He has six packs. He's tall, he's huge, he's this, he's handsome. All those things does not make marriage let me talk from my point this morning number one i'm speaking to the men as the man in marriage hear me you are the husband you are supposed to offer your family productive leadership i come again as the man in marriage you are the husband you are supposed to offer your family productive leadership now listen every man should understand that the moment you have gotten married you become you take the responsibility of the husband and as the husband your number one assignment is to produce you know for your family or offer to your family what i call leadership where are we going Ibu law now any man that is yet to understand his destination is not yet supposed to be a, a husband. Now, I wrote here, what destination do you want to take your family to? And this destination must affect every area. Number one, your spiritual destination, your financial destination, your material destination, and in every aspect. Ibu landlord, that's the first thing. That's why, can you see that marriage is not all about sex? Ah, Murile di o fine, Jackin Sari Fe. No. A mini a mini lori lay. That's not what marriage is. For every man going into marriage, understand that the moment you have gotten married, you are the husband. Now, the next thing is understand that you are now a leader. Now, what is the problem we have in Nigeria today? We have leadership problem. We don't have resources problem. Do you know that I got to South Africa? Now, when I visited that country, that country is so blessed. They don't have electricity problem. It's just of recent now. They said they started taking their power once a while. But they don't have electricity challenge. Their electricity sound. Their economy very, very sound. You know, every of their things, in fact, you see their road, their, uh, on their road, people obey traffic laws. When you are not passed, you stay. 
when you are passed. In fact, even when there's no vehicle at the other side and you are not passed, you don't go. I saw the kind of people there. If I one day I was asking my, my, my family member that is there, my sister, do you know that we were driving and driving? I didn't hear any horn, the sound of any horn. Papa, pum, 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 pam, pam, pam. I say in Nigeria, if you don't use horn, something is wrong with your car. And do you know what I discovered? I discovered that the problem we have in Nigeria is resources, uh, is leadership. Why? The only thing they have in South Africa is gold. But we have gold. We have gold. We have petroleum. We have other raw materials. But the only thing they have is gold. Gold, Nikono exports. Now, we are richer than them. We are larger than them. But beloved, do you know that Nigeria is broke? Why? We, do, we have leadership problem. Now that's why we have to take our oil, crude oil, our mulat in Nigeria, our send the rope, come our refine Now, while they refine, you know, it's, it's, the thing is simple. It's simple. Oni rum, oni oni rice, olewa, oni ugbe, oani ah, in fact. Katuma Jeunsi, a Jekin Sandy, Ewa, Rice, uh, Tomato, a Tiku Bun Kantama Fisebe, King Sandy, Loa Saba. Tobati was it, don't wash it, what are for me? And nobody is seeing anything wrong about it. Now that's how it is when you, as a husband, lack leadership skill. There will be resources, but your family will suffer. We're told that Nigeria supplies light to uh, uh, Kutonu here. And they don't have electricity problem. Why do we have it? We'll see it as we go on. So, listen, every man should understand that as a man, you are the husband. And you are supposed to offer your family what? Pro productive leadership. Everyone say productive leadership. Any man without a destination is not qualified to be a husband. Now, let's define this one, one after the other. Now, what, is, what do you mean by a spiritual destination? Now, what plan do you have concerning the spiritual life of your family? Ever before I got married, I wanted to raise, I, I had this vision. I want a family that knows God. A wife that knows and serves God. And children that knows and serve God. That's what I wanted. Now, and this was what I was praying about. And this was what I was planning about. Now, that's why even in our home, uh, at home, I keep talking to my children about God. I talk to them about service of God. That's why you see that one of them is in the, is in the media, one of them is in the ushers, ushering. And the third one, if you talk, tell him to preach, he will preach to you about air fire. If I want to preach about air fire in school, and the auntie says, shut up, you are making me afraid. Ah! We now have to ask the auntie, she won't she, she in content, she learn in me. Well, that's, my, that's what I want. You will not see me in church eh, and my children at home. No, 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 no. I was selling them this morning when we were coming. We have two cars. I can afford to be going. You know, when you have girls, you have girls, they are dressing and their timing is always different from that of man. That, see, see, I'm almost late. You must do it in such a way that we leave home latest by 10 minutes after ourselves. See, he woto ba fi in le, eh? That's why you must ask. I don't leave my children and my wife behind. Yes, if I go ahead, I will appear to be so spiritual. Pastor today is 7. Pastor today is 6.30. But don't forget, there is no aeroplane eh, without airport. There is no family man without a family life. If after all the fire have contacted, do you know we see land where? In the home. That's why it's my rule. I must wait for you. I will be waking them on Oh yeah, the day and the other day. And let's shake on. Oh, you do go and wake up. Oh yeah, wake up all We get them ready. We are going to church together. Why? I have a spiritual destination for my family. Talk to me, say I hear now. Now, that's the first one. Then when we talk about the next one, we talk about a financial destination. As the man, I don't want my family to struggle. I don't want children that will later begin at their old age, at their uh, mature age, they'll now be looking up to me and say, Daddy, send money now. 
that is same money now. I want to enjoy my old age. That's why, as part of my plan, as a man of the house, I must make sure that anything that has to do with academics, we don't joke with it. Now, we had an issue. We're just talking, you know, and uh, we're telling another, you know, okay, we're just talking to her about her schooling. Uh, uh, we want to put you somewhere and things like that. You know, when we said to a point, she said, ah, and I had plans, so I thought that I would be working and be schooling at the same time. I and the mom shouted at her, working and schooling, is something wrong with you? Where did that word come from? Are you okay? As I was slashing her, my wife was slashing her. And when her lawyer was to speak, he said, sir, he, she's thinking of working and schooling. Maybe she can assist. I said, who asked for assistance from you? Did I ask you for assistance? Did I tell you that you will help me to train yourself? Is there anything you asked for that I'm not giving concerning your education? Don't let me ever hear that you want to be working and schooling at the same time. Why? Because I have a destination in mind that I want children that will be financially balanced. I want that kind of family. That's why. Thank God for my wife too. It is because of the way the things I've shared with her that you see that she decided to take up so many things in order to compliment me. She will talk to you when that time comes. So, what am I saying? As the man, as the man, you are a leader. You must offer your family productive leadership. Listen, can I tell you this truth? Nothing happens except you make it happen. So, every man here, say after me, I'm a leader. That's why before you go into marriage, hear me, don't go into marriage, young people, I'm talking to you now, with a lady that will not follow you. A lady that, you know, there are some people you cannot lead them. Don't marry them. My fair, and it told me, daddy, I'm talking to the bros here. A, 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 you have a wife that you cannot say, this is where we are going, this is my destination, this is my vision, and she'll be telling you that, you're rubbish, you know, you know, you know, you be told lawyer, you love her. Ah, why not? She didn't know. Because even the Bible says a house divided against itself. What will happen? It shall not stand. Hallelujah. Let me rush through because of my wife is coming up now. Let's go on. So any man, don't forget, without a destination is not qualified to be a husband. Learn from Jesus our Lord. The husband of the church. He has plans for the church. His bride. The church is the bride of Jesus. Imagine where he has prepared for us in heaven. Can you see? Even Jesus, the church look up to him. Do you know, he told the church, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm coming back to take you. Now, the church respects Jesus as the husband of the church because he's a leader. He leads well. So every husband that is here, you need to wake up. Marriage is not all about, uh, just about sex. Listen, one of the things that makes wives to really respect and support their husband is the way real husbands organize their lives and family. One of the things that, okay, if I ask you, why do you respect me as your leader, as your pastor? Now, let's talk about it. Bring it down before I explain it into marriage. It's because of the way I lead. By the grace of God, some of you came here, you were poor. When some of you came here, your life didn't have shape. But the teachings were coming, the teachings were coming, you know, and things are getting productive. Today I can say, ah, ah, Omar Bamare. Is this not, uh, this, I, I, I saw those students in school, anytime I come to school, I look at them. Ah, ah, Shemilo, Shemila, I know your daddy from when there was nobody following him. Today we have uh, uh, his wife dressed like a best lady. Uh, 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 what do you call those people? Uh, ring, is it ring beada or what do you call them? I was looking at you in the choir. Okay, ah, she very she went. I very representing you. So back, you know, what am I saying? Thank God today, I can see the Dikin Femis. I can see Evangelist Shukudi. Now, I remember how I followed them in school to go and see the, the pastor of the woman he wanted to marry. And they said, where is your pastor? I said, this is the pastor. He's older than me. The man looked at me, looked at him. 
But leadership is not about age. Only your bashman so pay agba. Now, what am I saying? One of the things that makes wives to really respect and support their husband is the way real husbands organize their lives and family. That's one of the things that will make your wife to respect you. When he says, ah, ah, my husband knows what he's doing. You know, there are, there are, there are things you do that you, you, the way, the, the arrangement of the family, when it is time to move out of rentage, things are beyond, you have organized things. Your wife will be proud of you. Not that they are coming to disgrace you in a rented house. Rent you have not paid. School fees you have not paid. You know, God taught me some things. And listen, let me tell you this truth. There are some things God taught me that, son, there are some things you don't pray for. There are some things you plan for. God told me, number one, your house rent. You don't pray for rent. Your shop rent. Your office rent. You don't pray for rent. You plan for it. That's why you don't do things that are oversized. I saw an office at where there's this uh, a pharmacy, this new pharmacy on our road. I, I went to see the office. I loved the office. I wanted to rent the office. But when they gave, gave me the breakdown, I discovered that the total package is 787,000 naira. I told them, we stood, me and the agents, we prayed over the place. Lord, I love this place. Let there be provision for this place. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Two weeks after, they didn't see me. So when the agent now met me, Pastor, you didn't come back. I said, I come back, I will owe you. That I can gather the first rent and pay. But after now, your rent is 500000 for two rooms per year. I took time to work it. That how much am I going to save monthly? I discovered that it will affect me, it will affect my children, it will affect my family, it will even affect the ministry. You know what? I told them, I'm sorry, I can't go for it. That's how leaders think. Look up. The church at the level, we are using, uh, they give us what we call pre uh, estimated bill. Power bill of 13000 every month. So in the month of January and, Fe and February, we didn't have up to six hours light in the whole month. 10 minutes, psst, onto similar. We paid. So, I now said to myself, are we going to continue like this? This is how leaders think. If we continue paying 13, 13,000, they said it's fixed. How much is a meter? They said 63,100. And uh, there's this plan, that government have done this plan, that if you pay that 63,100, they will be refunding it back to you every month with a, 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 a recharge. I decided... Let's plan. Let's go for it. You don't, leaders don't think of immediate gain. They are very futuristic. Now, and that's who you must be as a man. Do you know that it is, it is part of this organization? It shows that you are not an organized leader if you give back to children every two, two years. A man will think, okay, tell you about to buy more to our school. She will tell you not to buy any. I'm talking to the men. If you want your wife to respect you, you want your wife to really support you, let her see your leadership quality. And how do you know a leader? Pay attention to his results. Man worry, man worry, man worry. put in plan. Man worry, okay. Or school fees. You know, you may not tell her the breakdown. But by the time you come out with results, I'm telling you, your wife may not say it in your presence, but if you see me behind you, I trust my husband. I trust my husband. I, are you getting what I'm saying? Leadership. Leadership is what makes the women, wives to respect their husbands. Now, quickly, how can you recognize the man that has this leadership material? Now, I'm, I'm talking to you, the man. How do you recognize? How do you know that you have leadership material? I wrote here, pay attention to how he organizes his life. Now, the women, you can also learn from this. You as the man, 
if you cannot organize your own life, you cannot organize the wife of the life of you and your wife. Ever before I met my wife, she knows me. Ask ask her. Before we started courting, my office, my I live at the, this building. I live at the third floor. The church is, was at the basement. I had my office inside the premises of the church, like this. I live upstairs. I set as a rule, 7 a.m., I must be in my office. So 4 a.m., I woke up, I, I wake up, do my morning devotion till 6. I've completed my prayers. I'm in the bedroom. By 7 a.m., I'm in the office. I didn't have secretary. I didn't have a boss. But I was so organized. I had a TV in my office I didn't have in my house. If you cannot organize your life, you cannot organize your family. Every man should look at this. And our single sister that are here, you, too, you better pay attention. Hey, that man is put, that young man, oh God, I, was, I saw his sneakers. His sneakers, he said, when I, I, I checked the cost of that sneakers he's wearing, it's one, 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 one hundred and something, thousand, uh, I, saw, I saw his shirt, is this? It is not sneaker or sneakers you will look at. It is not shirt. You know what you should look at? How well has he organized his life? Now, uh, what are the three areas that shows his organization? Number one, his spiritual life. Check. His spiritual life. If you don't have a spiritual life, you cannot attract a spiritual woman. How do you know his spiritual life? Check. Just to tell you, what is the proof of the Jesus in his life? Check his financial life. Can I follow this man? Check his material life. These are the things you must observe. Now, if you are organized, my brothers, I'm talking to you now, it will show in these three areas. Spiritually, it will show, what's the second one again? Financially, it will show in the third one, materially. So, what makes a wife to respect her husband is what? The leadership quality she sees in the man. Ah. 9.30. I'll be through with my session. She'll come up. Quickly. Quickly. Let's summarize this one. So, beloved, permit me to let you know that wives have great respect for men who are who have organized lifestyle. Organized lifestyle. Quickly, let me give this man. I'll just quote it. What does it take to live an organized life as a man? Five. What does it take to live an organized life as a man? Number one, vision. As you are, that, you are the man that wants to become the husband, start dreaming. What kind of family do you want to raise? You know, this is a family month. What kind of family? Do you have a vision of a kind of family? Maybe because I came from a polygamous home. I always hear from the back door. My mom would be shouting, Afolabi, you go kill me. Afolabi, you kill me. Afolabi, you kill me. That was, that was the special number they used to sing. They never fought in our presence. So, but my dad will take my mom into the room, lock the door, and they will start fighting. So, Afolabi, you kill me. You, that's what we used to hear. But I made up my mind. If I'm going to get married, Lord, I want a good home. Yes, we have arguments here, but it doesn't get to that point. So what's number one again? Vision is what makes a man to live an organized life. Number two, priority setting. Do you know that after you set your vision, you make a plan on how to get there? That's why you must understand priority. Know what is important. Know the important thing. I was talking to a parent in our school, you know, at the level school. You know, they used to owe. That's the only family that I know that used to owe school fee. And I was talking to the mom. You know what they said? He said, in fact, we love our daughter so much, we just bought her a bicycle. You know what I did? I said to myself, I write down in, that that child will not be allowed to enter school tomorrow. Oh, it's on school. Oh, it's school. 
misplaced priority in here. Can you buy sick of Edda? Yeah, when you have fun way, So, what's this? After one, one is vision, second is priority setting. It helps you avoid distraction. When you set priority, you avoid distraction. Number three, as a man, how do you become an organized man? Discipline. I call discipline the button that sets you in motion. Discipline yourself as a man. It's not easy to do the right thing. I finished my 47 days fast on, a, uh, 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 on Friday. And I told myself, there are some things I don't want to do again. One of them, I don't want to take sugary things for now. Because I've lost a lot of weight and I don't want to gain it back. So every time I open a fridge and smalt, if I yesterday, I took it. Move my hand. Please wait. No, no, no. That's discipline. Discipline is when to tell yourself no when you actually say yes. I need discipline. So many men can't go far. Number three, my wife is ready. Number four, seeking God's help on areas beyond you. You want to become an organized man, you need spiritual help as well. You can't do everything by yourself. There are certain things that is beyond you. You just need God to help you. Can you see that seeking God's help is not number one? And number five, consistency, I call it, consistency is the icing on the cake. Consistency about what? Consistency in working towards your vision. Consistency in setting your priorities. Consistency in disciplining yourself. Consistency in seeking God's presence. That's what makes you an organized man that will make your wife to respect you. Are you blessed? Let's welcome Mama right now for our session. If you are clapping, clap. If you are angry, don't clap. I told you I will speak to the men. She will speak about the women. Praise God. Praise the mighty Jesus. We thank God for the privilege. Thank you, sir. And thank you, church. Amen. I will be ministering from the hunger of the, the women. Amen. What we need to put in place and how to undo marriage. And our topic still remain marriage. Praise God. Papa have defined what marriage is all about. And uh, he took us from the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4a. Praise God. <clears throat> from my own side, I will be taking us from Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to verse um, 25. Genesis chapter 18, I mean chapter 2, verse 18 to 25. Amen. Let's look at the scripture. The Bible says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. Let's go on. And verse 19. 18, the Lord said, It is not good for the man to be alone. He needs somebody that should help him. And verse 19, the Bible says, And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the hair, and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Verse 20, And Adam gave names to all the cattle, and to the fowl of the hair, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam... There was not found an help meet for him. 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 
and verse 22, it says, And the rib which the Lord God has taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Verse 23, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. And 23 and 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And 25, And they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. When the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Now from this scripture, from verse, eight, uh, verse 18, we discover that the Bible says, God says, the man needs somebody that will help him. We have Papa stopped. He said so many things about how a man should be, what, a man, what is required of a man. But he cannot do it on his own. It is not possible for a man to do all the works that God gave unto him alone. He needs, the Lord looked at him and said, he needs somebody that can help him. And that is where I will take up my own uh, point from. He says, as the woman in marriage, you are the wife. You are supposed to be his helper. Not, go back to verse 19, please. Who is there? Verse 19. You should be his helpmate. But look at verse 19. Don't be, look at it, say, and out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field. Don't be a beast to the man. Be his helpmate. The Bible says he brought fowl. He brought uh, all the kind of living creatures. The Bible says God did not see anyone that fit in to be an helpmate. Why is it that this time in our generation, we have women, wives, that have turned themselves to beasts? The Bible says the, the, he did not find any. Definitely, he brought so many before Adam. Before he decided that, okay, maybe I should form another person that will be called a wife, a woman, somebody that looks like him. As I was studying, the Holy Spirit brought this to me. He said, now, the, the women have turned themselves, the wife have turned themselves to goats. Some have turned themselves to different animals. In the sense that they just want to turn themselves. But the Bible says at the uh, verse 20, the Lord by himself asked the man to sleep. He now brought a woman. Be a wife. Don't be a beast to the husband. Praise the Lord. He says, and Ada gave names to all the cattle. But the Bible says they, 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 are, they are not fitting to him. He looked at himself. This one cannot be of help. So the Bible says, and Adam was not found and help made for him. And verse 20, look at uh, 21. He says, and God asked the man to sleep. God formed another thing. He brought the woman to, to Adam. And Adam said, this will now be my, my, uh, my woman. This is a woman. He will be my wife. And the Bible said they were, they were naked and they were not ashamed. He knows that he's the woman. And as in the woman that God brought to him, that will be of help me to him. And that's the reason why I will be telling us this morning that you came to his life to offer him help. Don't be a beast to the man. You get married to somebody or you are, born, you are planning to be married to somebody later in the future. Don't become a beast. Don't become a foul. That essay, okay, do show, show, show. Be an help me. Praise the Lord. As a woman, I must be able to help whosoever I marry to attain some height, some height in his life. The reason why God looked at the man and said he cannot do all this thing alone. He knows before he brought me to my husband. I will be using myself as an example. He brought me to him so that I can be of help. I should not come to his life and, and scatter his destiny. I should not come to his life and destroy all that God has endowed into him. Look at all the assignment God gave to the man. He should be a provider. He should make sure we have food at home. He should provide a shelter for us. Then if I have become a beast to him, how will he concentrate? I want all our women here this morning and the wife to be tomorrow to begin to talk about this scripture. And I, as I was preparing, I told my husband, this is where God asked me to take the able help of the team that uh, what we are using for the women fellowship of our church. He said, the Lord said to me, verse 18, that is what a woman represents. Be of help. 
Are you an help me to the man? If you are not there, you are not doing anything in his life. And some of the area God wants us to help them is number one, their spiritual life. I'll be using two women from the scripture to show us how we can be of help. We'll look at their lives, the two of them, to see which one can actually fit in. Which one we should follow among the two of them. And if you look at the scripture this morning, as I'm going to open it to you, you will discover that we have a lot of things to do to help our husband spiritually. And I will take the first woman, which is from uh, uh, Abigail, the wife of Nabal. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, from verse 1 to verse it's a long story, but I will read it. Please, the person on, uh, there should be a little bit fast so that it will be easy for us to read through because of our time. I will take the first woman who helped his husband spiritually from the book of uh, 1 Samuel 25 and verse 1. Can you please put it on the screen for us? You have to help him spiritually. And look at it. Okay, did I get it? Let's see verse 2. Is it... Uh, um, Okay, verse 2. And there was a man in Moan, uh, Maul, whose possessions were in Camel. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goat. And I don't know what you. Uh, he was sharing his sheep in Camel. Please be, be quick. Now, the name of the man was Naba. And the name of his wife was Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding. And of a beautiful countenance. But the man that this woman married was a church churlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. Look at that scripture. The woman has understanding. She's beautiful. But the man she got married to was a fool. I was telling my husband yesterday, something yesterday, that you married an unbeliever and you are expecting too much from him. Please stop it from now. Ah, ah, ah. I want my husband to be like Papa. Do you meet him in the church? Is he a worker? I met my husband. He met me in the church. Actually, I was a, I was a coordinator of the, the, the um, evangelist, co co uh, evangelism coordinator in my church. He came there and he joined that team. So what, whatsoever you are seeing me doing now, we has been doing that before we got married. Some of us are having issues with our husband in our homes. We are uh, comparing them to each other. It's not possible. You have to wait for him to meet up to your, what you want him to meet up to spiritually. Are you getting it this morning? Let's go on. Who is there, please? And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his sheep. Okay? Go on. And David sent out ten young men, and David said unto the young men, Get up, get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. Okay, 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 let's be quick, please. And thus shall you say to him that liveth in prosperity, peace be both to thee, and peace be to thy house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. Okay, go on. And now I, had, I have heard that thou hast share us now thy shepherd, which were with us. We ought them not, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Go on, go on, and I ask thy young men, and they will shoot thee. Wherefore, let the young man find favor in thy eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever come to thy hand, unto thy servant, and unto thy son, David. Verse 9, and when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal, according to all those words, in the name of David, and, and ceased. Okay? And Nabal said, David's servant, and, and, me, and Nabal answered David's servant and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are, there are many servants now, nowadays that break away every man from his master. And verse 11, he says, Go on, go on. Shall I then take my bread and my water and flesh that I have killed for my sharers and give it unto men, whom I know not hence they be? And verse 12, so David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those sayings. 13. 13. And David said unto his men, Gather ye all every man his sword. And they gathered all every man his sword. And David also gathered all his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. Please be quick. But one of the women 
young were men, so Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. Fifteen. But the men, we are very good unto us, and we were not us, neither miss ye anything, as long as we were uh, conversant with them. When we were in the, in the field, okay? They were a wall unto us both by night and day, and, all, and the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Six, seventeen. Now, therefore, know and consider what thou would do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a man of Belia that a man cannot speak to him. Look at the woman that married that such a man. Then Abigail made haste and took and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine and five and five sheep ready for dress and five measures of parches corn and a and a hundred cluster of raisin and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on axes. Okay, verse eight, uh, nineteen. Be quick, please. And she said unto her servant, Go on before me. Behold. I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal, because she knows he's a fool. If you read through, because of her time, I still have another scripture for us, and I will jump. The Bible says she quickly went to David and prostrated. Ah, I'm sorry, sir. Please, have mercy on my husband. Please, you know him. He's a foolish man. He doesn't know what he's supposed to do. He is not a man that normally reason. He, he, she was bleeding. I mean, pleading on behalf of the man. And the Bible says, David said, I'm not going to kill him because of you. Can God look at you as a woman and say, because of you, because I am seeing your face in the place of prayer for your husband, I will not destroy him. I will bless him. I will increase him. Can God look at you like that, woman? Are you standing in that gap for that man? It's not all about, ah, we have lost three. What about the spiritual aspect? The back, the, we are in their life to help them to attain to that spiritual height. Are you actually standing in the camp for him? There are so many times in our marriage. I will tell my husband, these are the things I saw. Please stand up. Let's pray. Especially when he needs to do about him. I am not bragging here. But these are the things I do. Somebody will not be saying, ah, it seems Papa is concerned about Mama. Why will he not be concerned? Are you doing the same? Can the man boast and put his hand on his chest and say, I, I was praying. He was fasting. I was praying, Father, he must not break down. Because I know after the fasting, I know the consequence. I was with the day he clocked 47 days that he was waiting upon the Lord. I was thanking God that God, I thank you because I did, he did not land in the hospital. I was telling him, Ulu, well, she, this is the first time he will wait upon you and he will not break down. These are the things we are talking about. The spiritual aspect, is it hot? Can the man bold and, and say, Mumu, kwe, wumi, bad, ura, for me. Ya, woto, tis, lo, to, ya, pungo, lo, tun, ye. If you must, if you must help the man to attain spiritual high, you yourself must be on fire, and that is the responsibility of every woman. Before you get married to the man, build up your spiritual life. He met me on that place. I was telling my daughter, my first daughter, this morning. I said, "Look at uh, what I am trying to tell you guys this morning." Because at times they will say, "Mommy, ah, mommy is ours. Mommy is high. Mommy is kineko." I say, "Yes." Because what you are seeing my husband doing for me, okay, maybe uh, mommy wants to carry this and mommy, uh, daddy carry it. I said, he has been doing that even when we are courting. So, you must be able to help whosoever you marry or you are about to marry to attain a spiritual height. Look at Abigail. She was a woman who is always spiritual. I used to pray prayer for myself. May my spiritual eye never be blind. May my spiritual ear never be closed. Let me hear what you are saying, oh God. Look at the story of this man. Uh, what's his name? Job. The Bible says, and, the, and they, are, they are making a kind of meeting in heaven. And everybody was there. The devil came and he was telling God, ah, is it not because you are taking care of him? And he came one day and destroyed everything. Where was the woman? And the only thing she can tell the man is that, why don't you cause God and die? If you are such a woman, you are not meant to be a woman. This man, Hedan, he saw foul. 
Ori eran ko inu be ko ko pe ni yawo until when God brought the woman to him he now said this is my bone and my my bone the bone of my bone and the flesh of my she shall become woman she will help me ko ba ti mu fa o ko ba ti mu chicken ko ba ti mu dog he waited until you are brought to him don't be don't turn yourself to the beast in the forest in the house be strong spiritually Always be at a line. The Bible said the woman stood up. Of course, she shame any man. If you read through, the Bible said the man was still doing enjoyment. He was dancing. He was so drunk to the extent that he does not know when everybody disappeared in his house. The Bible said when, when Abigail got home, she did not discuss with the man. She went straight to go and solve the issue spiritually. Yet, can come back spiritual life where can come strengthen all who are shanomi, all who are bami. David, please, please help me. I, 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 I was reading through and I said, ah, David caught something from Abigail. And that was the reason when Nabal died. He went straight. This is the kind of a woman a man should marry. A woman who can stand still. That can stand on her ground. Only a walk on you, only a walk on me. Satani, only buy you a book walk on you, only a walk on you. These are the women God is expecting from her, you know, from our generation. Our mothers have done that in the past. Don't be relent. Don't say, I see, come and come and try best. You are actually killing the man. So spiritually help him. I will run through because we have another thing for the second service. Number two, in the in his financial financial life, are you helping him? Are you helping him? I have to cut it because I said I would talk about two, two wives, but time will not permit me. The second person was Sephora, the wife of Moses. Before I jump, please, to the financial life. Please hold on. The first, that on that first point was Sephora. I was reading through, through how the journey of Moses in the wilderness, Sephora was not there. She packed, because the Bible says, Moses sent her back to her, house, to her family. No, don't pass on him, Babe. But go back home because you are not helping me. Spiritually, you are dumb. If you read through in the book of Exodus chapter 18 from verse 1, the Bible says, Moses asked Sephora, go back to your father. My father lost said, Babe, because you are not helping me spiritually. And through how the journey to cross the Red Sea, Sephora and the children were not there. They were with our father. Are you such a woman? I told my husband, Father, go do. What you query me? So about you, what are you about it? What move me for that? I need your baby. We have women of these days saying that to their husband, and I look at them. I am the last born of my family. I got married when I was twenty-three. Till date, my marriage will be twenty years this year. I have never for once called anybody. Come and help me solve the issue of my family, and I will never do that. Show Rosie me no, but I keep pushing it. It can work. And he's walking. Sephora packed her load with the two, two children. She returned back. Ah, She was not there. All the miracle God performed through the, the, the God's servant. She was not there. Do you know the last the, the, uh, Exodus chapter, maybe 24, the Bible says she now followed her, her daddy with her two sons. When God has given Moses victory, he said, I feel like he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. The Red Sea. If you look at that scripture, the Bible says Moses did not talk to her. She, he was actually talking to Jethro, the father, because he knows there, was, there is nothing upstairs in, in, the, in the head of Sephora. Don't be a woman like that. Be spiritually strong. Strong. Some people will say, I don't like mama. Don't like me because I am on fire. To back be one of my Spiritually, I am not dumb. To the glory of God, I'm, I'm not boasting. But let the man rely on you and say, I beat my chest. in Because my wife is there. Can your husband do that? You are fighting over rubbish. Every small thing you are on. You, ah, if you cannot provide, are you praying for him for the provision? No! How do you want him to provide? Everything needs to do about spiritual life. Stand up and move on. Praise the Lord. Then the second point is about on, on his financial life. So many women can spend. They know how to spend. All their life is, my mates are buying this, I must buy it. And you want the man to prosper? No. 
do you think I don't know how to have friends? I have them. They are looking for me, but I'm running. Because if I should join them, I used to tell my husband, I will leave you. I know my levels. But I cannot go to them because they will distract me. Some of them are not in marriage. They don't want you to have it too. So, please, on the aspect of his financial life, help him to, prepare, to, to program it. Help him to arrange it. I used to tell my husband, if you give me 100000 today, I don't spend all. My bear queen. In such a way that the remaining, you will ask me tomorrow and I will still give you the change. The Lord is expecting you to help him attain his financial height. Help him. You want your husband to honor you? Then help him. Help him to build his financial life. My husband used to ask me a question. Where are you seeing all the money that you are using to do the contribution? Because I have my daily contribution. I have my weekly contribution. I have my monthly contribution. And one thing about me, I don't just ask him money. I want for all my need in come by. Because all our young girls, start building yourself. I started working when I was 17. Ask Evan. Evan can testify because we were together right from the beginning. I could remember when I was looking for a job, when I was strong, I told him, I just need a transport fare for one week. Ask Evan. Evan is here. He normally comes. But he's always in my house. Evan, I need transport fare for one week. And after one week, ask Evan. He's gone to a say, I said, don't worry. I'm okay. And I will walk from my okay, but I will at times I will walk down to Mobi. Where am I walking? I'm actually walking with in, in Zate. I was at the fishery department, and what was our job? We are there to feed the fish. With what? With the leftover of the intestine of chicken yesterday. Intestine. Have you tried it before? Do you know how how the odor, odor used to be? But you can never see me. That ah, I will be on my suit like brother uh, G. And I will climb the truck. Truck in nothing be wang by. I won't see only she. So right from the beginning, multi mobile she So you cannot give me something and I would not say, ah, oh for me no red thousand. Ah, oh shop boy, kwe yombe. Ko ba mi son wo shop buri, I won't say. If you see any shop, I'm, I'm occupied. Obama is so wary. And the reason is because I know how to plus one, plus one that will give me 1,000. Develop it now that you are younger. And those of us who are already married, don't wait that everything must come from your husband. My mentor used to say something, that she is a pity nowadays, that when a man dies, the woman also dies alone. Because every of the totality of the woman is on the man. Stop it. Help him to build his financial life. Build yours too. I don't wait for him to give me money. Some of us here, oh, 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 no, no. Ask him. Ask Precious. Ask Apo. They know me well. I don't wait for that. I used to tell them, whenever he's not around, ask the confirm I don't even help them to even look at it. Me, it's here. I have told him right from the beginning, 23 years in the ministry, because we started it together. I have never for once checked the book of Tithe or Lolo Wally. I don't know anything about it. I've never for once put my eyes there. So you have to help him to attain his, his financial life height. That is what God is expecting from you as a woman. Stop being a beast to him. I have brothers that normally come to me in the, in the school to come and share their experience. They will say, Mama, what should I do? This woman is disturbing my peace. I don't have time to rest in the house. Some of them will be crying. I will be crying with them. And I keep telling them, the Lord will help you. Benny, Jesus told one, I am 11 years old. Oh, help me. So, oh, back my daily lay, Jesus, he lay, Joe, look, look, what's here, and let me take my days here. So, what do you expect from that, a woman? So, you have to be patient with her. 
Somebody came to my office and was holding his chest. Ah, but mama, my chest, my chest. I said, you have not been sleeping for some time. He said, she won't allow me. I'm afraid. Don't become a beast. The Lord look at all the things he created. He know they cannot fit in to help the man. And the Lord brought you to the man. Help him. Don't frustrate him. Praise the Lord. And the last point I'm going to take us here, help him to build his material height. How? Help him to acquire properties. I'll be 43 this year. I have never for once think of having my own. Do you know the reason? I am not afraid. I'm not afraid. My tomorrow, I'm not afraid of my tomorrow. Let me go on me or he relents. I used to ask him a question. Can you give me the privilege to have my own later, my own property after helping you to build your home? I'm not moving there, but I will put people there. And it will be in the name of my mother. And he said, no problem, but we'll first build your home together. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Have you not seen that such women don't live long? I'm not afraid. Me back my day lay Joe. The part of the just is as a, as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. I am doing my best and God is helping me. Please help him to acquire property, to acquire material things. Don't say, Mr. Lagbajalo Lele, Mrs. Lagbajalo Lele. We have it because some of us are afraid because of our husband. But please help him also to force our thing. Tomba no work on it. Ah, daily Things have really changed. Don't let them say I say Osilo Bewa. There's one of our brother. I, I used to tell my husband, I say, Ah, I pity him. And let's say Osimiji Lolo Bewa. Everything about him is just dropping. I said, the Lord will only help him so that he can attain the height that God has for him. Don't be like that woman. Be like Abigail, the woman who stood still with the man and said, I will help you build the future. Because that is the only assignment God gave us. To help them spiritually, help them financially, and help them materially. I pray. That the Lord will help every one of us and will attain that height in Jesus' name. Please put your hands together for my husband. Hallelujah. Are you blessed?